Hello and welcome to Carlene's Anime Corner, a St. John's County Public Library podcast. This is episode 39. And today I'm very excited because I have again Zoe in the room, but we also have Mr. Andy. Hello. So, Mr. Andy, uh, you're the children's librarian here at the main library. I am. And also my dad. Yay! So we have now had the whole Calvert family almost on here. <laughs> we just need to get my brother on here somehow. I don't know if we can drag Max into here for that. No, I, I can't even drag him outside his room. <laughs> All right. Today, I usually, Mr. Andy, I usually start things by talking about some nerdy thing we've done in the last month. It's the last time we recorded. Okay. Um, have you done anything fun or nerdy? <laughs> Um, You know, I work in a children's department, right? Yes. So pretty much every day is fun and nerdy. (laughs) It's kind of the definition of working at the library half the time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he watched the subject of today's episode with me, so that could count, I guess. That that would definitely count. This was definitely a very... um, I did. Interesting watch. (laughs) (laughs) And what have you been up to, Zoe? This is actually kind of surprising, but uh, I recently, because of my friend, I got into the Mega Man series. Because this is out of nowhere, but she just sort of started talking about it to me while texting, and now I guess I'm a Mega Man fan. I found out that the intro song for Rockman 8 is really, really good, and the music <laughs> in the games is really, really good, and like apparently the lore goes really, really deep, so I guess I'm a half Mega Man fan, even though I've never played any of the games or watched any of these shows. <laughs> All I know about it is what I've absorbed through her ramblings, and like it seems like a really interesting franchise. <laughs> There's that. Okay. Well, I have to admit, I have not been doing too much lately, but um, I've been watching Star Wars shows on Disney Plus with my friends, so we finished The Book of Boba Fett and started Obi-Wan Kenobi. As honestly, those shows are both like solid 5 out of 10s for me, to be honest. Yeah. They're they're pretty good. I enjoyed... The only thing about our critique about Book of Boba Fett was like there was a half hour in there that we were like really did not belong with Boba Fett because <laughs> uh-uh. it had nothing to do with his story. Uh-uh. That could but. have just been Mandalorian season three, really. Yeah. 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 Is it bad that my favorite part of the book of Boba Fett was when the Mandalorian showed up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, please rescue this thing. Uh, uh, yeah. I didn't think it was that bad, but no. yeah, it was better I once thought Mandalorian it was, showed up. I mean, for Star Wars, I thought it was just kind of boring. Like we already know what happened to Boba Fett after the Sarlacc stuff. And they, yeah. like, they showed that and they confirmed it, but like still. I, I kind of like the fact of him kind of taking over tat- the city in Tatooine, though. I thought that was kind of fun that the, they made his plot line to be the daimyo of the uh, city there. I know, but it was also kind of anticlimactic. And like the the the, the speeder bike gang, the, sc- the, the moped, <laughs> the space, the yeah. space moped the squad, the, the, mo- s- the space mods. <laughs> the s- yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. they were mods, as in they modified their bodies, but they were. Heavily based on the mods of the 60s and 70s. I know. Yeah. And yeah. We didn't get nearly enough of the Rancor. I wanted no, to... that was cool. He, he needed to show up, I think, a little bit sooner or a little bit more or something. They needed to actually utilize the fact that he had a pet Rancor. Yeah, because like, they, they need to show him like bonding with the thing somehow. And they, they just really... showed him petting it once, and then all yeah. of a sudden it obeys him now. So I said, it's, It was not terrible, and I enjoyed watching it. And the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi one is going pretty well so far. I thought it was also just decent. Yeah, nothing. I don't. I don't think it's going to be one of my favorites. But as I said, my friend and I we're bound to determine we're going to watch all of the Star Wars together in order. So we're working our way through from series to series right now. Have you gotten through Andor yet? No, that's after we finish Obi Wan Kenobi. Andor, Andor was good. Andor is pretty boss. Andor. Was good. I have heard Andor is amazing. So we're looking forward to that one. But we still got three more episodes of Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Shall we start talking about this movie? This movie. All right, let me go ahead and do our summary and everything. So we are doing probably the oldest anime film we have yet done on this podcast. It came out in, let me double check real quick because I keep getting my years mixed up. 1969? 1969. This Mm -hmm. movie came out. Is that the same year as Woodstock? I don't know. (laughs) I don't. I know it's it's, uh, (laughs) six months before Scooby-Doo. It's a, well, it's a few months before Scooby-Doo for sure. Um, which becomes an important discussion point later on. Yeah, <laughs> surprisingly. 
This movie came out in 1969. It is only an hour long, and it crams more stuff into one hour than most series attempt to do in 12 episodes. Or or, or even like 20 episodes yeah. or 50 episodes. Yeah. I, there is more plot in this movie than in most modern shows that I've seen. And yet they do a ton of exposition at times, too. So yeah. they can't decide yeah. which way they want to go. All action or exposition? Should we say the title of this movie? Yeah, we probably should move on to that. <laughs> we, we What we watched was a movie called The Flying Phantom Ship. It, as far as I can tell, is not available streaming anywhere. It was just released last December by Discotech Media. However, our uh, very friendly acquisitions librarian, Mr. Keith, <laughs> went ahead and ordered a copy for our library. So if you are in the St. John's County area, eventually it will be available for checkout through our library. And it is certainly an experience. Uh, so maybe watch this before listening to this. Cause like, Yeah, I would say this is definitely one that if you don't want to be spoiled, um, it's more fun to watch it before you know what's going on. <laughs> This is true <laughs> because because I was aghast most of the time. <laughs> I was yeah, like, wow, that just happened. <laughs> and then five minutes later, wow, that just happened. And then five minutes later, are you kidding me? <laughs> yep, it's, that just happened. It's a rollicking fun fest. I'll tell, I'll give it that. Okay, that is so, a very interesting way to describe this movie. I usually try to do a summary of a film, but this one is so crazy that I'm literally just going to read the back of the box, which doesn't even begin to tell you half of what happens. In oh this no! Movie. Oh no! It does not. On land, under sea, and in the air, the strange phantom ship is on a rampage all over the world, appearing in its wake as a giant golem claiming to be the phantom ship's envoy. Wherever the golem goes, death and destruction follow. Only one courageous boy, the grieving Hayato, can put an end to the global villainy. Vowing to avenge his parents, Hayato joins with the phantom ship captain, who is also bent on revenge. Full of thrills, suspense, friendship, and laughs, you must not miss this sci-fi gem. Okay. All right. So, so before we get into this, um, yes. are we concerned about spoilers? No. Because this movie's chock full of them. I am going to say that after this point, we are going full on spoilers because there's no other way to talk about this movie. Right. Yeah, you cannot usually, discuss this usually film we do, without spoiling anything. Usually we do a short like non-spoiler, thoughts and review and so on. But quite honestly, with this movie, you, it, you can't go non-spoiler. It's too short and has too much in it. But I will go ahead and ask you guys... After you having watched this film, out of five stars, what would your rating be? Okay, so are we doing out of quality or out of personal enjoyment? You want to do both? Have a personal enjoyment and a quality rating? Okay, so personal enjoyment, five stars. This All was way. All the way. This was an Highly amazing movie to watch for the first time. <laughs> If, that you cannot call this film boring at all. Nope. There is not a single moment that's boring in this entire film. Okay, And critically speaking... I don't even know. 3.2? Like, <laughs> maybe? It's confused. It's, it's, like, it's like you got like three different writers and they all tried to write a story for it and none of them talked to each other the entire time. And then they just took all three of the plots and tried to make them all work at the same time. It's almost like they made a 15-hour movie and then edited it down to what, an hour and a half? Hour. And they cut, an hour exactly. And they cut so much out of it that you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> all the time. Yeah. <laughs> So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Andy, what would your rating be on enjoyment and quality since we're going with Absolutely two scales? Absolutely five stars. That was very entertaining to watch. <laughs> I highly recommend it because it was goofy and and crazy and you're just like, what? The whole time. So, yeah, <laughs> it's at, definitely at worth moments. watching. But as far as like writing and technical and are we even discussing the animation? Because it is 1969. It I is mean, 19- there were. For 1969, I will say there were moments of very good animation. There in it. were. Like, especially near the end. They had some really good scenes that were well done, and I could see some of the effects they were trying to go for, but it was still pretty low key. But for the time, it was pretty good. And at the yeah. same time, you got a Scooby Dog over here. Well, I mean, uh, ha- have you watched Hanna Barbera shows? I from grew that up era. on Hanna Barbera <laughs> so, shows. Yeah. I, which I did too, because they reran them and for decades. And they were decades. also really bad, <laughs> yes. but highly entertaining. Yes. So, yeah, I'd give it like a 3.2 for its um, technical and whatever <laughs> stuff, <laughs> sliding. So I have to admit, I'm, I'm running around I'm the like, same. I'm not even making words anymore. I'm so yeah, flabbergasted. Yeah. But I'm running around the same. I would definitely give this a five stars because everybody needs to watch it. Mm-hmm. But it is a 1969 film that was not made with 
the biggest budget on earth or for the highest prestige art house theater. So I would probably give it about the three stars that you do guys do I, for I quality. I should mention that. Uh... There are some d- character designs that I'm like come straight out of the Tin Tin graphic novel. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> so there's some Astro Boy in there, too. Well, it is a... Uh, Especially with Hayato. He looks like... He just looks like a recolored Astro Boy to me. Well, and that, quite honestly, is a lot of that time period. Like, there are times where his neck is, like, wider than his shoulders <laughs> in some profile <laughs> shots. But, like, I should mention that I actually... A couple of days before we did this recording, so, I, um... should I tell you oh. that the, um... So this is based on a story written by a guy, and I'm going to butcher the Japanese. Shotaro Ishinomori... And oh, you got he, it perfect. Nailed it. Yeah. He would later be the guy who created Kamen Rider and Super Sentai, which if you don't know what Super Sentai is, that's what inspired Power Rangers. Ooh. So. You, no, could, you could kind of see some parallels. You can see a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. But it's funny you should mention the Astro Boy connection because apparently he used to be Tezuka's assistant, the guy who created Astro Boy. <laughs> So that's why I kept seeing Astro Boy in this thing. So, like, I'm just saying, Hayato, he has like moments where he's got like the exact same like proportions and facial expressions. And I'm like, wait a minute. So is there any Scooby-Doo connection other so, than the, the coincidence of dates? Because I, when you there's first, such a heavy Scooby-Doo and the mystery crew. When you first looked this up, you were like, okay, this was made in 1969. Yeah. Scooby-Doo was made in 1969. Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, were they going ahead and riffing off each other? I happened to recently just ILL in a book called Hyao Miyazaki, exploring the early work of Japan's greatest animator, because, spoiler alert, he actually animated a little bit of this film. Mm. And He did the, the robot, I think, the golem. The robot, and I think he did the tanks also. So if you notice, the tanks are remarkably well drawn. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he did the octopus at the end. It goes ahead and he mentions that what is really curious about this is that despite the fact that the character has a dog that resembles Scooby-Doo, that Scooby-Doo debuted several months after this show. Yes, but there's such so many similarities. It almost makes you so, wonder, did they hire someone from his crew to help them get Scooby-Doo launched? Was there some kind of... I back don't know. and forth, or was it just purely coincidental? Did someone from Hanna Barbara happen to be in Japan and saw this? Yeah, there's also so. uh, the, the point that we watched it dubbed the first time, and I'm pretty sure they really leaned into it in a Scooby Doo, Goofy oh, Hanna Barbera oh, kind and of that's, way. That's a very important point. Watching this film dubbed <laughs> and watching this film subtitled are two completely different experiences. So if you watch it dubbed, you will definitely get Scooby-Doo flashbacks because they talk just like the characters from Scooby-Doo. The dog even laughs like Scooby-Doo. They made this try to be as 1960s as possible in the dub, which I do appreciate because Mm -hmm. this is a brand new 2022 dub. And it's straight up corny in the dubbed version. (laughs) It's a goofy, weird romp, sci-fi romp. But then you watch it, in subtitles, it's a horror movie. It's yeah, it's a horror movie. Yeah. It's like it's terrifying. The, the, in, the intensity of the scenes is amplified by the sound effects and the and the the the, the actual dialogue and the way they edit it and stuff. And the mm-hmm. the kid, I the way he yells and screams like that is actual emotion and that mm-hmm. is terrifying. I he, he peaks the mic at times too. That's why I love the fact that this show is so short because I watched it pretty much back to back. With we did Japanese too. and the English, and it was, a, it, you didn't get bored watching it. <laughs> we watched it dubbed first, and then we went back to watch a particular scene in the original language and subtitled, and ended up watching pretty much the entire film because we were like, whoa, this is not the same movie we just watched. <laughs> so we had to see how different it was throughout the entire film. Well, and the funny thing is, I don't think they changed all that much as far as what they were saying. It was all in the inflection, a lot of it. Yeah. It yeah, was the, the style like, of the voices, the, yeah. the inflections, the, yeah. and just the way they carried the characters. Because um, modern Japanese modern dubs tend to be a little bit more careful, I think, sometimes on their translation. Some older ones are straight up just like, oh, we're not sure what they're saying. We're just going to make this up. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, we don't think that's appropriate for our audience, so we're just going to change it, period. <laughs> so they don't do that quite so much anymore, although it does happen still. So... But. Just to give people an idea of how ridiculous this show is. Yeah, let's start. Let's see if down. we can remember all the things that happened in the show. Can I? Can I try and list everything well, that happened? First off, we meet his mother, who I think says one word in the entire five minutes we see her. And then she 
dies. <laughs> and that's after. <laughs> and wait, 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 but wait. That's, 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 that's after, after. That's after a giant <laughs> robot comes out of nowhere and destroys a oh, city. But wait, wait. But wait that's we've already after, seen after we have the haunted house with the skeleton uh, guy. <laughs> the skeleton, skeleton guy. captain floating in the window and detailing his horrible, tragic backstory. But that's after we had a random car accident that we still don't know how it was exactly caused where the head of a giant corporation gets knocked unconscious and the kid is and the main characters are on like a fishing boat and they just see this car fall off a cliff cliff. (laughs) and they decide to climb the cliff to see if they're okay and then they take shelter in a haunted house and then they meet a skeleton captain and the dog hijinks and then we see the burning ship and then we and then have we have the robot smashing the city. And before that, and then the ship is now flying and fighting the robot, shooting missiles and lasers. No, we don't see it shooting the robot not yet. yet. Oh no, not, not yet. yet. That's not later. Yet. That's later. The robot destroys the city. Hayato's parents die. He has a meltdown. He finds out that his parents aren't really his parents; that he's actually adopted because he is found drifting on a piece of wood. He has, out he has of a the photograph ocean, in his watch. Has a photograph in his watch of his real p- da- parents. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have reached now the twenty-minute mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing is I and, kept and stopping and going. How going. far are we? Okay, and then so, he finds the amazing um, lounge chair roller coaster well, ride. So that's so the. CEO of the giant corporation that they rescued comes and gets him, says you can come live with me, and his and he and his wife are really nice. And that's weird. I, and that's self. yeah. And then he, well, I think his dad used to work for the corporation or something. Yeah, so his I dad. Think. His dad was like so, a, he, he's like a manager of like the shipyards or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so and then they're watching TV. The Boa Juice commercial comes on. And plays is, twice. And plays twice, which was the most annoying And I jingle. should mention, the Boa <laughs> Juice, uh, before the robot attacked, the kid was just sitting in this car and talking about how he's basically addicted to the soda. And then a tank comes down and crushes all of the cars in the traffic line. <laughs> yeah. And almost kills like 50 people. And then the robot appears. Yeah. And then we have... And then, after the commercial plays, he sees the phantom flying ship shooting the golem monster. With missiles. With missiles. And lasers. And lasers. And then, he goes looking for the CEO guy, sits in this chair that's just randomly in the middle of this tiny room, and that's when we have the weird roller coaster roller ride. He, like, <laughs> hits it, and then he falls through, like, a trap door. <laughs> and then he goes, uh, there's, like, a, there's, like, a full minute-long se- p- point-of-view sequence of just, like, him going through a hallway. Mm-hmm. And then he finds there's an underground weapons factory underneath the CEO's mansion that's shipping weapons to, like, countries worldwide. And then he finds out that the golem came from the CEO's mansion. It was because living he under sees the ma- it coming down he with sees the it coming arm. down. And then he goes into this like, weird, like, room that has, like, a, an, like a, a clear floor. So you can see they're under the ocean. And there's, like, mm-hmm. a giant, really well-animated manta ray come underneath. And then yeah. he finds an evil, like... Conference room. A Dr. Evil and conference room. And this is where, Dr. Evil, exactly. This is where the James Bond vibe was going strong oh, on this time. show. Oh, big man. Time. This whole thing, this There's evil lair was James so Bond James Bond. Film. I don't remember which one it is, but Sean Connery is like in his little bubble car cruising around this underground lair and he's seeing things and witnessing things. Is that the one with the volcano lair? Cause Might I think have been. Because I think that's the first one, Dr. No. It's been a while since I've watched it. Yeah, it's been a long time like, since I watched it. And is it Dr. Too. No the one that also where he has pushes a button and his henchmen like fall into a lava pit? Down because below? Yes. that happened. Because yes. they do that, in, they this do movie that in this too. movie, too. He, he, he goes into the conference room. He's waiting outside. He's and then like, the... let the computer decide your fate. And then there's like... Some... <laughs> and then he just gets dropped into the ocean. <laughs> which we never actually see him fall into the ocean. But we and see I his hat. We see his hat. Which I do, I do like that touch where you just see his little hat bobbing by underneath the clear floor. <laughs> oh and then Hayato's not bothered by this. He's talking about how he wants revenge at this point. Yeah, you know, he's ta- he's been talking about how he wants revenge the CEO is pretty dang evil, and apparently his... Mega corporation like runs everything in this city because mm-hmm. like one thing about this movie that I did not expect is the very strong anti corporate like message it's got going on here. Oh, pretty intense. Because like yeah. it, it's it's revealed that the CEO dude he runs like the national weapons like fueling for the government. He runs like the TV station. He runs the construction company. That's he runs rebuild the city. He runs the soft drink company that everyone's addicted to for some reason. But. Was this the point where Hayato finds out that the big boss has a boss? 
Oh, no, no, no. Afterwards, oh, no, he, that was he escapes and he tries to tell, tell the, the police, police and they don't believe on. him. And then we find out that there's been random disappearances with just people leaving their clothes behind and nothing else. Yeah, because people are just melting in the street. Uh, yeah, because yeah. the soda that the kids were drinking. If you drink a thousand <laughs> bottles, you melt. Which I will say I got to that point in this movie. I said, when did this become a straight up horror film? Because that yeah. was kind of horrific. And right then shortly there. after these people start melting, these giant crabs come out of the ocean. And start oh, no, attacking no, no. Everyone. Oh, that's after that's Hayato. After. Gets gets kidnapped, gets kidnapped oh goes to the TV station, is going to be interviewed, and then the giant crabs come out. <laughs> and that, Sorry, and even over. then, during that, the reason the reason the crabs come out is because during the TV interview, he's like, "Oh, by the way, the CEO is behind all this robot stuff." And then the crabs break in and go like, "Hey, you ruined our contract!" And we're all like, "What contract?" Because apparently, the evil CEO had a deal with an with something called Boa. Which apparently has giant sea monster crab robots. And shrimps and, and octopus. Shrimps and octopus. And a giant crazy octopus. Yes. Yeah. And then the giant robot crab spits blue bubble stuff on the CEO and melts him. <laughs> and yeah, and then he all, he tries to do the same thing to the kid and his dog, but then the kid he gets it's like a, a rooftop showdown. And then he falls off the roof, and then the ghost ship appears and picks him up with a tractor, tractor beam, beam. <laughs> with a, which was the most '60s animated tractor beam ever. It's like the concentric circles it's going just like, down. Beam me up, Scotty. I guess. Yeah. Okay, and oh, we and have then, now hit at what point in this movie? I think we're at the forty minute mark. Yeah, I think so. And I should mention the crabs <laughs> were weirdly well animated compared to everything else. Yeah, they were. And, I, and, like, I think they were the coolest part of the movie, even though I was not expecting a giant crab to come busting through the wall during the TV segment. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened. Well, and the best part is is that stupid Boa Juice jingle starts playing again because they're having technical difficulties, so they just start playing that yeah, commercial nonstop. They, like, they just cut, they cut <laughs> off Hayato while he's trying to expose them. They just start playing the... And even then, the commercial itself is weird. It's just two cowboys shooting each other and then drinking the soda as they float to heaven. Like, is that foreshadowing? Or, no. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it's just 60s commercials. <laughs> yeah. no, it's just Drink weird. boa juice, kill your best friend, and toast on your way to heaven. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what it's doing to you, pretty so, much. Anyway, after this, Hayato is now on the Phantom Ship. He meets the captain, who explains that he suffered horrible burns, so he started wearing a mask, and then he got so used to it, he just never took the mask off, which I was like, so that's a stupid <laughs> excuse to go around in a skull mask. So the, the skeleton pirate captain is not even a real skeleton. Like, no, what? No. That's so then, lame. Well, and then the best part is they spend, like, he spends, like, three minutes there talking to this kid that he has literally just met and explaining exactly how his ship works. And then he goes, do you want a tour of everything on the ship? <laughs> and then the kid is a seizure. Because he's going through boa juice withdrawal. <laughs> And he, and he hits a button that turns off the shield, and then giant, <laughs> giant missiles attack. No, no, giant like you know those sea mines you see in like World oh, War Two, like yes. giant floating sea, sea mines. mines come they up. come up and shoot lasers at it, and they knock it out of the sky, and it and falls in the, the ocean. ocean. And that's when it turns into the submarine. <laughs> Ghost submarine. And the captain's like, kid, I, you I almost did killed kind us. Of, I did kind of like the way they showed it. Like, the ship was sitting on the clouds like it was on the ocean, and then it literally tilted and sank beneath yep. the clouds. <laughs> and then we meet the girl character on the cover for the first time. And we are now at 15 minutes till the end when we finally meet the female character that's on the cover. <laughs> I don't even know what her name was. I don't either. <laughs> I don't even know if they told us her name. I'm not I think she said her name like once when she was they yelling at the kid. They did make it very clear that she was not related to him because throughout the entire movie, you don't know who he's related to. <laughs> true, true. So he's like, wait, is this Oh, and sister? by the way, the skeleton captain's his real dad. Ah, uh, here we go. Oh, yeah, we didn't mention um, that part, did we? No, we didn't. No, because we haven't gotten to that part. You don't find... <laughs> Because after the ship sinks, long. after the ship sinks, and they're trying to figure out what to do, he looks over and he goes, "Oh my gosh, his mask is off." And he pulls out a photo and he goes, "You're my dad." Of course, he's <laughs> unconscious right now. And then they find out his mom's dead. So this kid has lost three parents it's, in the span of like two days. <laughs> <laughs> and his, Are you sure it's two days? Because I think everything has happened in pretty much. I one don't know. Day I don't. I mean, it was it was sunset when he was having the big emotional oh, confrontation with his, with his dog. So with very well done music for that scene, I will say the music was very dramatic for a guy yelling at his dog for two minutes. <laughs> You mean the uh, dog who kept his dead mom's shoe in a backpack? Yeah, the dog's bag of stuff with an animation error because the shoe comes back and the heel isn't broken. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why I noticed <laughs> that. Continuity. So, 
Okay, so <laughs> I, I figured out what the name of the girl is. I believe it's Ruriko. Yeah, I'm but not, I think I'm not gonna they, remember that. But I swear, that. I think they only mention her name once in the entire thing when they first meet. Oh, and so you know what? Let's finish the plot and then okay. we can talk about so, specific scenes. Apparently, then Hayato and Ruriko decide they are going to take the ship and go blow up Boa at the bottom of the ocean because they somehow know where Boa is, and they're going to do a suicide mission. Pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Because they're going to use the ship as a nuclear bomb. Because the ship is powered by, by a nuclear, nuclear reactor. reactor. And the two kids, these two kids <laughs> who just met. Who I swear are who, like 10 years old. Who are like 10 years old, <laughs> make this pact to do this suicide attack where they're going to drive the ship and blow up the underground city. And then while they're doing that, they meet these weird slugs that like glow for a bit on the cavern walls. And they go into a minefield. And then they get attacked by a giant. A, and then there's a ship graveyard. There's a ship graveyard, which is through. honestly kind of terrifying. That was mm-hmm. kind of scary. Yeah. And then they get attacked by a giant octopus. Giant white octopus. That has like 15 more frames of animation than everything else in the movie. Yeah, that was a pretty intensive attack right there. It was and really cool. It was. Especially, I like the fact that they defeated it by turning on some kind of magnet something. Yeah, they had a magnet cannon in the back of the ship. scramble the electronics in its head. And the only thing I could think was... But didn't that also scramble the electronics on your own ship? <laughs> well, it's a cannon in the back of the ship. Oh, that's true. It was a, mag- it's a mag- cannon. magnet it did cannon. It shoot like a ray Okay. Out of it. And then, and then like, the octopus that, goes like know, berserk. Sense. Yeah. It the makes octopus, perfect sense. <laughs> the octopus goes like berserk. And then like it's like a full minute long sequence of it smashing itself into a wall like five times. Until it dies. And that was actually kind of cool too. It's honestly kind of scary too because, you know, and it's then, going insane. I forget now. How did they blow up the city? They, they drive the ship at the portal that leads to the city. That's right. And then they drop the ship in the portal. And then the captain shows up last minute and is like, hey, we have an escape pod. Because apparently the ship has That's escape right. pods. Yeah, it's like, oh, by the way, you don't have to die. Let's escape pod out of here. Yeah. So they, they get escape pod out. And then they, they drive the crashing ship. Because there were like a million guns shooting at them at the same mm-hmm. time. And they drive the crashing ship into the <laughs> portal right as it closes in. It blows up. It blows up everything. And this is the part that confused me the most when I watched this. A giant clams comes out of the water, belches smoke three times, and then buries itself down under the sea again. And that... And then the movie ends. <laughs> well, pr- not quite, but pretty much. And, and then like, it goes into a what? song number. What was that clam? So supposedly they blew up. Was it a portal? I think it was a portal to an underwater sea. Was it a portal? They call it, it a portal. Or was it an evil clam that was running everything? They call it a portal. <laughs> they call the entrance a portal. Just a giant evil clam. They say they have an underground city with a portal that leads to it. So which goes por- into my theory that this a, movie has ties to Pacific Rim. A so was could the, just be a door. It doesn't necessarily the, have to be a... Yeah, and it was a, they, they call it a portal, though. So yeah, I'm like, I'm assuming it's an actual it up, portal. This clam comes out of it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what the clam is all about. Is the clam just living below the portal? Is the clam a robot? The portal blow up, the <laughs> Except clam the clam looks very organic. It but like so did little... the octopus. So did the octopus. Oh, okay. And so did the crabs and the shrimp. I don't know. I mean, not the crabs, the, sh- the, sh- the shrimp. That will never be solved. I yeah, think, I, I, don't, I, I don't understand the clam. I personally <laughs> think the clam is the city. It's like a mobile city. And it's like relocating after it got after it shrugged off the atomic blast. Okay, so they just so committed it's like, genocide and wiped out an entire city. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, was, they were that evil. Was, that was they were gold, but they were evil. They deserved it. <laughs> they were they were melting people with soda, and they were so, they were setting crabs then, on and the then city. We have the epic ending where they're on the man. The mansion has been reclaimed by the captain. You see the kid wearing a captain's hat, walking off into sunset with the girl, and then they go sailing on the boat as the ending song sings, and the dog loses all of his junk in the ocean. To a shark. To a shark. And they laugh about it, like, oh, we'll get you new treasures as we sail around the world. I'm new like, you're 10. <laughs> new treasures or new junk? Because I thought at one I think point they new said sh- new junk. <laughs> no, no. I, Hayato said new junk, and then the girl said new treasures. I already forgot her name. I kept trying to wait for the plot point with the dog's backpack thing, because there was that one moment they made where, a like, point of showing it to you all the time, and I was like, "Well, why there was is one he point where I think backpack? didn't the dog yeah, they were saved hiding. by the kid grabbing the bag? Uh, and... No, they grabbed his he they grabbed his collar. Oh, okay. I think there was this, I think the only reason the dog had that bag was because you know to cute character. And also, there's this the scene where they're hiding from like the sea mine patrols while getting to the city, and then the dog drops his bag so, and it makes a noise, and somehow the sea mines hear that. I, have I this, guess I, I had this weird feeling as I was watching this movie towards the end 
that the dog was grieving Hayato's adopted parents more than Hayato was at a point. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the treasures as they're being like ripped open in the end, there's like a doll in there, there's like a tie, there's like cans, there's dog toys, there's like human stuff. There's, yeah. a, there's a locket. It's like a, a, a necklace with like a locket. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what does that mean? I'm telling you. I don't know. 20 hour series <laughs> condensed into a one hour film or however long it was. Because there's so much missing. So we we have now spent probably half the time of the movie talking about what was in the movie. Yeah. In general, what let let's start with talking about what was your favorite animated moments. I have two because we decided there were moments where the animation was really good. There were two, and I think one of them is also yours, Mister mm-hmm. Andy. Uh, one was this octopus, the whole octopus fight scene. That was it was really well animated. The octopus moved like an actual octopus. They put way too much effort into that one scene, and it really shows. And this other scene, it's like a random cutaway to like a tank rolling through an empty city full of the giant crab robots, and they cut inside the tank. And there's just like clothes and discarded yeah. bottles of soda. That and was like that oh, was a scary scene. That was actually horrifying. That was like so, every zombie movie I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. and it's just like a, a lone tank Three just rolling around clip. aimlessly while the drivers are just like gone. Yep. Like yep. they they melted. won the trip to the bottom of the sea, I guess. They melted. They turned into seawater and yeah. foam, and that was horrifying. Like what? So, <laughs> and your favorite was the tank one. As yeah, well, or the absolutely. It, it stood out. Um, yeah. It was a very like, odd and weird scene. It's, it's like, like you just see this tank rolling through the city, and you're like, okay, what's the tank going to do? And then they cut to the inside of the tank, and everybody's dead. <laughs> and it's just a tank <laughs> and rolling through an abandoned city. With, with like crabs, with crabs on the wall. Slugs so and... a little, I, I watched a commentary on this film, and while watching I got a little bit of background on what this film was made for. Mm-hmm. So apparently Toei Animation, who was the company that was in charge of making this film, they had summer film festival things that would travel around Japan. And the idea was there would be an hour-long film for the boys and an hour-long film for the girls. And this was obviously for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you look at the girl characters, they... Uh, but uh, this movie well. was particularly made for children to watch. Fairly young children. <laughs> well, <laughs> Which you know, kind of made some of those horrific moments a little bit like, okay... I grew up watching The Roadrunner, you know, so back well, in the yeah, day. Yeah, that's true. Just insane amounts of violence in cartoons. As it's long not... as you don't show any blood, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> lots of people died, but there was no blood anywhere. Well, no. there was that scene with the mom and had like a sheet over her face. Yeah. No blood. No, no blood. blood. And then but the... she was dead with a sheet over her face. Definitely and the was kid was dead. screaming, crying on her bedside and blaming her for dying. And then dad died while he was talking to him. N- not dad died. Oh yeah, yeah. Dad, dad dad died while telling him that I'm not your dad. <laughs> Which I was like, that was really kind of the worst. Like, thing like by the way, there's that. a picture in your watch. <laughs> it's a weird place to put a picture. Yeah. yeah. How, um, is it, he said it was in the band. Like, he you, said it was in the watch band. Yeah. How do you do yeah. that? You like tie it on there? How'd you not notice it before? I don't know. I don't do you know. wear the watch all the time? Your favorite watch? I don't know. Yeah, there are a lot of questions. But I so some of my favorite moments were actually one of them. There wasn't actually a lot of animation, but it was that opening like one minute sequence where they're showing the phantom ship under the water and stuff, and they're doing the slow pan across everything with that creepy sixties music. Mm-hmm. And then like the and, cra- the skull opens, and the skull crack. opens, and then it does a little xylophone music, so you know it's not truly scary. Oh yeah, the <laughs> and then a crab. The crab that comes out of its mouth. Yeah, and, like yeah. that whole opening sequence is really eerie, and it's then the, really and eerie, then the skull and really creepy, and then you have the skull which kind of lightens it up again and then it's like the whole rest of the movie has nothing to do with that opening and like the, 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 the opening the, the 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 shots of the phantom ship are really well drawn they're mm-hmm. like hand painted they look really cool and creepy yeah it looks really good which is part of why i enjoyed that one so much the other one i thought was kind of fascinating because this is completely hand drawn so i like it when they try to do something different with the perspective so there's that one point where they're shooting the missiles at the golem and the airplane and you get a pilot's heads up view of him trying to shoot the missiles. And I thought that was kind of for a 1960s animation, pretty mm-hmm. ambitious. And then for them they to show do. it crashing into a building and almost crushing like 50 people with the debris. Well, yeah. <laughs> the, the collateral damage in this film is pretty high. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> see like multiple dead people pinned under rocks after the golem attack scene. Like, they're not bleeding, but like they're not moving either. So. Yeah. And so, they're under a rock. And apparently in 1969, men of importance had. Re- 
ridiculously large mustaches and eyebrows. <laughs> To the and, point where most of their face was completely obscured by mustaches and eyebrows. And all the women had weird doll-like eyes and pallid skin colors. and No emotion. No emotion whatsoever, except for like the girl and she's like a kid, so she gets some emotion as a treat, I guess. Well, again, I'm going to reiterate, this movie was supposedly made for boys. Why do you need girl characters? I know, but like also the scene <laughs> at the beginning when they're um, in the haunted house... I got an idea. <laughs> In a haunted house, and, and the girl, the, the wife character sees the ghost captain, and the way she runs away, like, she's got her eyes closed, and she's, like, flopping side to side like a mannequin. It looks so <laughs> weird and gross, and I'm like, wait, is she human, or is she some kind of weird doll? Now, is that, like, bad animation, or is that, you know... I don't know. I think it's both, really. We're on purpose. Yeah. And they like, made the child look terrified by making his lips do this, like, weird wibbly, <laughs> wibbly <laughs> zigzaggy thing while he was running with his eyes closed. <laughs> it got the point across, but it looked really weird. Yeah. I would say the most Scooby Doo like moments of this show were the ones where they were in the haunted mansion because that oh, yeah. definitely gave you full on Scooby Doo like vibes. Like the first, like, five minutes of the movie, and then that- everything after that is insanity. Yeah. 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 It was like Scooby Doo all the way through the Haunted Mansion and then Godzilla movie for the rest of it and then weird sci fi James Bond stuff. And then <laughs> Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim. <laughs> yeah. I have to the admit, ending the is ending the, is very Pacific Rim. It's I have literally to, I have the exact to, yeah. I did not put it together until you brought it up. Literally so, the exact yeah. same ending as Pacific Rim. They have a nuclear powered like weapon slash war machine slash transport. they're going to suicide into the the monster. And the, the monster portal. portal has giant oceanic monsters that they send up to Earth to destroy everything. And I'm pretty sure Boa's aliens at this point. Maybe, maybe I'm deluding myself, but I'm 90% sure they're like ocean aliens or something. I'm still not convinced they're aliens. I'm still thinking there may be some kind of secret s- I mean, s- the- sub, sub um, underwater life a civilization I, or something. I just want to say aliens for the sake of it. but like, Because like the crab robot refers to, them, refers to itself as a uh, great boa. So like maybe it's like some kind of prim- maybe the clam is sentient or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. It depends on what version you're watching. Cause like in the English version, it's like I work for Boa, but then in the subtitle it's like I work for Great Boa. So like, is it one thing? Is it a million things? I don't know. What is Boa? Who cares? They make soda that dissolves you from the inside out, and they have giant so the, robots. So the lesson of this movie is don't drink soda. Yeah, don't drink soda. <laughs> Especially if the soda is so addicting, it makes you want to drink seven bottles like every minute. Like they're talking about because like, that's well, a thing. and also don't drink anything where they're giving you a trip to the undersea for if you drink a thousand bottles of yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, also that plan by itself is kind of dumb because you can just buy a bunch of cases and collect the corpse without drinking it and then turn those in. It's like scalpers exist, so kind of a bad <laughs> business model. You get you ripping apart the plot line. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's a lot to talk about this movie. This plot line already doesn't make any sense. No. What? It does not. But it's highly entertaining. That's it why is. I'm having so much fun talking it about this. It is very the, the, entertaining. The, the, it's like the watching a Fast and the Furious film. You don't know what's going on. You don't even care. There's just lots of car chases and explosions. explosions. and family. <laughs> and, and family is the most important thing in the world. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Like, boom. <laughs> There's your plot That's line. That's the entire franchise. <laughs> you just summed up the entire franchise. All uh, 17 films. All of them. How I, many, I wait, wait, almost, are there 17? I have lost count. The, the 10 just came out, and there's one side one of Cal, of Hobbs and Shaw. So uh, there's a grand total of 11 films now in the franchise. <laughs> and please do not ask me how I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assume someone told you or something. <laughs> Well, we had some technical difficulty there, so Mr. Andy had to leave us and go back to work on the desk because the library is getting ready to close, and he has to actually do something other than talking about anime with us. Yeah, we kind of pulled him away from that. Yeah, an important job, but eh, oh well. (laughs) In summary, we all agree we like this movie, however it is not the best thing ever made. I mean, it depends on your perspective on what you think the best thing ever made is, but this is definitely a movie you should watch when you're late. Or just a little hazy on the brain. Like if you're tired, if you're sick, or if you just want to hang out with your friends and do dumb stuff, then just watch this movie, I guess. This is great. Yeah, it, It's a fun movie just to sit down and watch if you're having a a day where you just need something kind of brainless. Yep. So Just turn off your mind. 
Well, and thank you all for joining us and listening as we talked about this film. I'm kind of sorry our discussion cut got cut a little bit short, but Zoe's mic cut out, and then Mr. Andy had to go on the desk, so these things Big happen. Thanks. Big thanks to Mr. Andy, who's not yes. here. <laughs> Big thanks to him. So we we have been trying for months to get him on here. If you guys have any thoughts or comments about this film, if you've had a chance to watch it, we do have a place you can contact us in the email address in the show notes. And if you have any series or movies you would like to recommend, uh, Zoe and I are looking at doing something possibly Studio Ghibli next month. So We need something nice and relaxing after all this nonsense. All this craziness. And if you're enjoying the show, please share it with a friend. And Zoe, do you have any other last comments to make? Uh, the Mega Man lore goes a lot deeper than you think. That so, is all. So does the Sailor Moon lore. Oh, yeah. And, you're, and you just realized just how deep the Dragon Ball lore goes. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Some revelations were made this week. Yep. So with that, uh, wishing you all a great uh, summer and a chance to watch a lot of anime. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>